getting into the nature stuff, right? Let's let's dig into that a little bit because I like what you said earlier. I we both have sort of in the past decade or so really dedicated ourselves in a big way to being as like self sufficient as we mm-hmm. can and doing all these having all these inputs, especially in regards to animal products. And I talked about it on the show, but it's, it's been a long time. Essentially, for us. I knew that there was something to the whole agrarian thing. I knew that there was something to producing food. And it took me a long time to sort of work out a philosophy of it, right? Uh, of why we should raise our own food and be reliant on ourselves in like it from a Catholic lens. And the Catholic land mm-hmm. movement does seem to be taken off in a yeah. big way. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would love to hear sort of the background of why you guys became more purposeful in regards to that. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I think there's a lot of motivating factors. Um, and I think it was a development over time too, right? So I did not grow up hunting. Mm-hmm. I did not, I, I, I always played out in the woods and what happened. Sure. So I had my exposure, but I was not a hunter. We camped a little bit, but I really got introduced to hunting by my father-in-law and I couldn't even hunt when I went with him. It was, you know, snow on the ground in Minnesota, freezing cool. cold. And I'm sitting up in a deer blind and can't do a thing, but sit there and watch these guys do what they do. And I had a blast. Yeah. I helped him drag out one deer cool. and it, it was was like three quarters of a mile and I had never done it before and I was exhausted and it was terrible, but I loved it. Right. And, and I, I would, I think I was bit then. And then, um, as I started having kids and, you know, you're moving towards this life, you start to just realize, um, you know, the, the amount of work that it takes. And for me, it really is like my soul is torn. I, I hate work, not, right. not the work no, of my it. hands, but I hate being away from my family right. all the time. And the reality of my dream is if I could find a way to make everything that I need for my family from the work of our hands and the things we could do on our property totally. and make just enough money to sustain, that's all I'd ever want. Great. Yeah. Right. Have my family be a part of that because it, I, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a romanticized view, but little house on the prairie, man. Like I want totally. to be mom and pa. Like, yeah, totally. to, to a T. That's really what I want to do. But I, I think as you start to pursue that, right? Yes, that is a good in and of itself. But then there's the other motiv- motivating factors of our faith and of our society. Not that society is motivating me in a good way. It's the negative things in society that are motivating me. Um, and in a lot of ways, it is this 100% disconnect. People have no understanding of the food that we're consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think actually... I. COVID had a huge part to do with a lot of my thoughts behind it, not because I'm afraid, but because I realized that we are relying on a construct in society that could disappear in an instant. Right. We, we were literally on the brink of all of our, you know, pipelines of food and industry shutting down, you know, grocery stores were running empty. And it's like, my responsibility is to ensure that my family has what they need. Right. And if I'm in a position where I can't provide that for them, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a man. Sure. And my reaction to that is the only way for me to appropriately address that is to take it on and make it happen by the work of my hands. So that's, that's kind of yeah. yeah. where we're at. And, and, and I think, um, yes, there is the immediate philosophical standpoint of you're closer to what you're, you're consuming and putting on your table. Um, but I'll tell you the first time, and we were living in a townhome with, you know, a, a backyard, probably about as big as this studio is. Right. And we had three little box gardens and I had started hunting. I got my first deer with you. I remember that. Uh, that was great. We, yeah. We, and brought that deer home. We cut up the It was meat. a spike, wasn't it? It was a spike. Yep. It was a spike. And the gardens are the yeah. vegetables from my own garden. And I put that meal on the table and and it was like the deepest sense of like good fatherly pride that I've right. ever felt. And and we we are very much in pursuit of that journey again, right? We've been moving here and there. We haven't been able to get back to that place yet, but now we're we're on five and a half acres and we're we're trying to figure out how to work the land and, and start moving towards what we really want to do in homesteading and Yeah, and I feel like, you know, once again, that's something that's been put on the hearts of a lot of Catholics because yeah. And I, every time you talk about it, you feel, I feel like a doomsday prepper, right? I feel like a crazy person. Right. And I want to make it really clear, right? I, what I'm saying and what I think you're saying, too, is not, hey, we think the end times are going to happen tomorrow and we need to, like, bunker down and be able to draw up the drawbridge and batten the hatches and all those things. Um, 
that's that's not my primary reason for for pursuing this self sufficient right. Yeah. That's a nice bonus. Yes, if that exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Not the primary yeah. reason. There, we'd be lying if we said that wasn't part of right. it. Right. Well, and I do. I feel like too. Just as as men, I think there is something written on our hearts for that, and it's it's to to be able to provide by ourselves for yeah. our family. And I don't want to get into some rah 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 hyper individualistic. Whatever idea, because I'm I'm the first person we talk a lot on the show about the importance of community and needing your people and all of those things. But I do think there's something to be said for that. Once again, written on our hearts, this idea that no, no, it, at the end of the day, it all falls on you. The buck mm -hmm. stops with you. It doesn't stop with the supply chain. It doesn't stop with the fact that uh, the San Francisco Teamsters Union is on strike, and so the grocery store is not going to have eggs this week or whatever. Right. You know. It falls on you individually. And I think like so many other things, we've given over responsibility for our own well-being to our government, which is broken and disordered and really, really new in regards to like human history. No one did that even a mm -hmm. hundred years ago, right? There was no concern about starvation because, I don't know, some government unrest or something in the United States 100 years ago, right? Because all of your food came from within a couple miles of where you lived. Mm -hmm. And the further we've gotten away from that, I think the easier it is for us to pretend like we exist beyond nature and beyond our own capabilities when really we don't. We're just like putting lipstick on a pig, right? We've found lots of ways to hide the fact that, no, we're, we're, we're part of this whole, uh, this whole system and we're part of the natural world and everything. That's cute. But it's not it's not true. Ultimately, it is me as the father, as the head of my household to make sure that my family's provided for. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I can go down that rabbit hole a lot. I think we probably both could just well, about all day. All right, guys. John Henry Spann here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you check out the full video. Uh, also, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share it with anybody who you might think is interested. Thanks for being here.